Hello there. Harry Potter! Oh my. What's going on? Welcome back to the channel today, guys. We have another episode of Flicks and Bricks. I know it's been a while, but I hope you've been enjoying the interviews with the Eshen brothers, um, the directors of Fat Man, and there's been a lot of insightful talks with that, especially making it in the film industry and responding to critic reviews as well. So I tried to make those interviews a bit unique, and the last episode is definitely a one to watch with us discussing step-by-step -step process of how the Eshen brothers have made it to directing a Hollywood blockbuster and also responding just in general to critic reception of Fat Man, but also to other films overall and what directors think of that. So hopefully you guys check that out. Um, that'll be linked up below. But it's another episode of Flicks and Bricks today, guys. And we're continuing with the Harry Potter series and we're on to the Goblet of Fire. And hopefully you're enjoying the Hogwarts build in the background. The set that we have for today's video has been built already and it is placed there. If you haven't guessed already, it is the clock tower and fitting for the Goblet of Fire as well as it's based off the Yule Boar, the clock tower. And um, yeah, we're going to crack on into the review. And I wish I could have made this a live review with me building the Lego, but it was a three hour build. So I don't think you guys want me sitting here for three hours discussing Goblet of Fire. So in the future, I want to do more live builds and obviously discuss it at the same time, which is what I want co the, the core of Flicks and Bricks to be, but hopefully with smaller sets. So let's crack on to the review about Goblet of Fire. And I'm currently reading the book and about halfway through it, I'm up to the first task chapter at the moment. But I'm not going to be comparing the book too much to the, oh, to the film at the moment as I haven't finished reading it. But from what I've heard, I've heard a few things with the tasks. And obviously, this film is centered, around the, is centered upon the Triwizard Tournament. And we have multiple, there are three main tasks that Harry Potter and also the other champions have to undertake. And from what I've heard, the film differs from the books quite a bit in terms of the tasks. The tasks are much longer in the book. And certain stuff happens especially in the final task the maze that don't happen in the film and i have spoiled it a bit for me the final task in the book from what i've heard from someone and i would have loved to seen that in the film but unfortunately we haven't but let's crack on to the review if you were to ask me a couple actually a year or two ago not too long ago what was my favorite harry potter film hands down i would have said the goblet of fire but now upon multiple rewatches, especially over the last few years of the series I think it's come to become uh, it's come to be Prisoner of Azkaban. Goblet of Fire is still definitely up there as my second or third favorite, but there's a few things I think looking back upon now about the Prisoner of Azkaban, and I said it in my last review, especially the, the direction of Alfonso Cuarón, uh, it's phenomenal in the film. The cinematography alone in Prisoner of Azkaban is above any Harry Potter film in in my opinion in general, and I think Alfonso Cuarón does a does a fantastic job as well as directing sort of suspenseful and horror elements as well, which I would have loved to seen him bounce back and go back to back with Goblet of Fire. However, that's not that does not happen in the Harry Potter series unless the first two films. Um, we have a new director again, Mike Newell, I think. And although I would have loved to have seen Alfonso Cuarón uh, put his spin on the Goblet of Fire as a, he would have been able to create like so many fantastic shots and as well just capture that capture more suspenseful and tense moments especially in the tournaments with the dragon and even in the lake in the murky waters and then also in the maze at the end i think yeah alfonso Cuarón would have been the perfect job for this film but fortunately that's not how it goes but mike dewell does a fantastic job as well i think the cinematography is fine in the film especially directing this tri-wizard um especially directing the the uh, expanding the law with the quidditch world cup i think he does a fantastic job at sewing how vast and expanse this world is. Obviously, we have the massive stadium as well. This is a massive joint. <laughs> like, if I was to explain, it's a massive joint. And the book goes into more detail about how they keep it in, keep it in hiding. And just, um, the it's more describes in detail how they walk through the, walk through the World Cup, see their friends. It's just, I think there's not enough time in the film to capture all of that otherwise, because we still have to get to the task. And even I think in the film, they're a bit cut short. But, just in ter in terms of the Quidditch World Cup, I think it's a fantastic addition to the Harry Potter universe. And it, even though we don't we don't get shown the game, there's enough teasing there just to show that this world is massive and it does enough to I don't know capture this amazing moment. Obviously, we have Harry Potter entering in tent, and he's like, "Oh wow, I love magic!" And just it's just a feel good, happy moment in the World Cup. But obviously, like any Harry Potter film, it is cut short. 
<laughs> Any feel good happy moment is cut short. We have the introduction of the Death Eaters and sort of Voldemort's followers, and then we have the Dark Mark. And what I do love about this film is it's the first Harry Potter film that sort of doesn't it doesn't start from Harry Potter's point of view, the main protagonist. We get introduced to this caretaker and this scene um where obviously the returning Voldemort and Wormtail and Barty Crouch Jr. So it's a unique sort of start. The book starts like that and it's a kind of it's a new fresh take and i like that in the films as well we don't get sort of the same perspective here and there for, with harry potter we get a tease that voldemort is going to return and off the bat straight away kills a muggle no remorse <laughs> but then as the film goes along get introduced the it's the new year hogwarts and hogwarts has been chosen to host the triwizard tournament so we have the uh the students from Borboxtons. i hope i said that right um the french school madame maxine and the effects don't hold up they hold up okay as their sort of um, their carriage with the horses, the flying um, horses still holds up pretty well. And then also um, the Durham Strain uh, school as well with Karkaroff leading it. Um, their ship still holds up fine. The effects are still all right in terms in general in this film. They some are a bit wonky here and there. As I said, the carriage, um, the ship going up as well. And there's a few vast shots of the Black Lake in terms of like you can tell it's sort of a 2D image. It's not rendered fully. But that's fine um if you can look past that i mean the effects are a bit dated here and there but in terms of, like from a story standpoint it's it's really grasp you when you get to this tournament and you see obviously the little conflict harry has with ron when he obviously finds out that his name came out of the goblet of fire and dumbledore asked harry calmly to put his name did he put his name in the goblet of fire and obviously we know that harry didn't but we see Harry's introduced to new obstacles in this film. Not not only the Triwizard Tournament, but obviously dealing with... He's already famous in general, but obviously being a champion now, there's there comes a burden that obviously we have the interviews of Rita Skeeter and this, there's, there's more baggage to it as well. He has so much more to deal with than just the Triwizard Tournament. He has to deal with the loss of his best friend as Ron, come, like, as Ron just doesn't believe that he didn't put his name. And also he has all of Hogwarts besides the Gryffindor sort of turn on him. Obviously we have the Potter Stinks badges and he has to carry that luggage as well. Then we have the fight with Hermione who's sort of like a messenger in between. And I like that. I like that dynamic where Harry has to find, Harry has to sort of put the pieces of the puzzle together now and sort of find, for, sort of find solutions to the tasks by himself. And obviously he finds out what the tasks are sort of as the first one in, in at the like in advance but he still has to sort of find out through moody mad eye moody another character the new defense against the dark arts teacher who we are introduced to and he's a fantastic here uh he's a fantastic character and introduction to the series as well um he's just sort of this no nonsense straight not not by the books wizard and that's what i love about him he's as ron says he's really been there hasn't he <laughs> and he's sort of like experience he teaches them off the bat the the unforgivable curses and you can tell the shock of the class they're like in fourth grade <laughs> they're in their fourth year they're up i think they're 14 years old now at this point and they're sort of introduced sort of off the bat by mad eye and as we all come to know the end scene it's not mad eye it's barty crouch jr and um there are a few hints and teasers throughout the film obviously with the sort of tongue animation he does and then the lingering shots of the sort of um i think sort of the chest yeah the chest that i think has seven openings to it but um yeah he's a fantastic addition and he sort of you i like him off the bat i remember on first watch as a kid this guy is amazing he's helping harry harry in certain instances he's a complete badass i'm not sure looking back upon it now as i don't know i haven't finished the book yet if it's explained differently if the original mad eye would have been like that but obviously he would have because i think dumbledore wanted him to teach the students about that and we see i uh, see i think the super carlin bros did the harry potter theory and dumbledore wanted to dumble the dumbledore th theory sorry dumbledore wanted harry potter to learn about these unforgivable curses so obviously he's instructed mad eye to do that so i think the old mad eye would have done that anyway so obviously we find out it's body couch the apologies potion and in terms of the tasks the tasks are amazing to watch um as a kid i remember just seeing harry potter overcome these obstacles it was just such a feel-good factor and they're the scenes are directed fine and some the effects hold up pretty well i know the hungarian horn tail holds up really well i know i'm up to that in the book at the moment and i know the film sort of cuts 
cuts past the other champions doing their tasks and just focuses mainly on Harry. I'm not sure if the book focuses on the other champions, so I can't sort of delve into that at the moment. But from just Harry's standpoint, the tasks are amazing to watch. I know the Black Lake one is especially, I think, probably my favorite because I think it's more fleshed out. The Dragon one's just on the broom, but the Black Lake one I find the most intriguing. I just love underwater stuff in general. <laughs> and then the Maze one, I think, is a bit underwhelming. It's a bit cut short, but obviously they have to get to the climactic sort of reveal and that is the returning Voldemort and that is amazing to watch I remember seeing it um for the first time viewing it and if their job was to capture Voldemort as this sort of like intimidating imposing and scary and forced to be reckoned with they did capture I remember him just evolving in, and just these scary noises and it freaked me out as a kid and then obviously seeing his bald head <laughs> and those like freaking pale eyes they scared me as a kid and I know in the book he has red eyes and I would have loved to have seen that in the film as I think it would have looked more menacing but obviously just got to make him more I, I guess more human more relatable and um we have that Harry has his fight with Voldemort which I think is obviously fantastic he has the backing of his parents and even though Voldemort does not win, um, I think it does a great job at establishing that he's going to be a force to be reckoned with. I mean, he's just returned, so obviously he's not, he's not, he's not obviously at full strength yet. And Harry needed the help of his parents and that sort of distraction. He didn't really defeat him; he just sort of had that distraction. And he goes to the cup, brings back Cedric, who unfortunately um, got wrecked by Wormtail. Obviously, um, the Killing Curse <laughs> of Vada Kedavra, and it just shows that. Also, Voldemort's followers are a force to be reckoned with as well, not just himself, as no mercy straight killed a student from Hogwarts and the shockwaves that sends throughout Hogwarts as well, that when Harry says it was Voldemort that killed him and Dumbledore's really the only one that believes him, even the students, as we get to the other films, really don't start to believe him because of the Minister of Magic. But yeah, all in all, I think from a technical standpoint, Goblet of Fire is just pretty fine it's great there's great cinematography especially with the obviously always the vast landscapes of hogwarts has always going to look great um even in the task it's directed really well by i think mike noel and um um the only thing that i think from just just halts back the film a bit is i think the madame maxine and hagrid romance i although it's in the book i think it just could have not being as much as a focal factor in the film at certain points. I think you could have taken out some minutes from that romance and inserted it into the task, which I would have loved to have seen just a bit more fleshed out minutes in the tasks. But that's my only gripe about the film is that romance. And obviously we have the introduction of the Yule Boar and obviously they're 14 year old kids. It may be cringy, but they're 14 years old. Hey, who wasn't like there at 14? If you are talking to a girl or anything, it's always going to be like that. And I love how Ron and Harry are down in their luck with the girls and they just have to settle <laughs> for the last resort. But all in all, I think the Goblet of Fire is probably still the top three of my Harry Potter films. And I thoroughly enjoy it so much still. Just, just, it's just, my only issues is the romance, the tag along romance with Hagrid and Maxine. But if I was to give Harry Potter the Goblet of Fire ranking, guys, I'd give Harry Potter the Goblet of Fire the rank of Jedi Master. Yep, second highest ranking on my list. But hey, I've always loved this film and I think it's a really strong Harry Potter film, obviously. And what it sets up as well with Voldemort returning and is a real catalyst for sort of transitioning Harry Potter from... Uh, Prisoner of Azkaban did it as well, transitioning Harry Potter from sort of like more of a fun sort of, yeah, the little bit dark and I say, but transitioning into a really dark and horror. And then if this one, if the graveyard scene doesn't do it at the end for you, then I don't know what does, but it sort of does set the precedent for, that's it, Harry Potter is going to dark times now, and that's what I love about it. But hopefully you guys enjoyed the Lego build in the background as well here, the clock tower and um, just the final build, it's done now. And yeah, that's been another episode of Flicks and Bricks, guys. It's been your boy, Ellie Moses. Sorry for the speech and stuttering. I'm still learning the so, still learning the art, sort of, of trying to learn off the bat and talk off the bat. I want, these, I want these reviews to be as authentic as possible. But yeah, all in all, it's been your boy, Ellie Moses. Hope you've enjoyed it and take care.